Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Celtic Supporters Podcast and another edition of My Celtic Story. And tonight I'm joined by Big Keith for Come On The Hoops, uh, one of the OG Celtic content creators, um, going for about 11 years now, I believe, big man. That's it, uh, 11 years last month. I've <laughs> seen that, mate. 43,000 followers and facebook over 11 11k subscribers pushing towards 12k pushing to the 18k mark in instagram so the og mate you're the you're the daddy that's it i started, I started a long time ago it was all just a, a hobby at the time it was like ah look it just to kind of have a laugh and then i start getting serious but um i think it's it started getting loads of followers about two years ago when lockdown happened so when all the musicians couldn't gig it um obviously venues we just put them on the page. We used to when we won when we won the obviously the nine in a row. We we had an all day session. We had about fourteen different acts on that day. Aye, it was. Aye, that's it, mate. I struck it struck at the right time, mate. I think the podcast that started in lockdown was absolutely phenomenal. I, I was the same. I just done it for a for Sunday day. Paddy, Sean, evening, boys in green. Uh, Welcome, thanks to everybody that's watching on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Hit the wee like and subscribe on my YouTube channel, please. Give us a wee follow um, at Celtic Podcast 67 on Twitter. Listen to my shite patter and you'll see my upcoming interviews, weeklies, drunk shite chats with Paddy, the Jungle Gyms boys, Keith, um, all Keith stuff that people that don't know them, probably know anybody on here, is all in the description box on YouTube. Um, email addresses, Facebook, Twitter stuff, YouTube, everything's there. Have a wee look if you haven't subscribed to the Come On The Hip stuff as well. Jump on, lads. Feed the bear as well. Evening, mate. Right, so another addition of my Celtic story. Um, goals go right back, mate. Right back to the start, where you were born and growing up and how you started supporting Glasgow Celtic, mate. Oh, it's all going to be all unplugged now. This is where I lose all my followers. <laughs> this, is where, this, is, this is where I'd be brutally honest with the whole world, is it? That's it, mate. That's it. Um, started off, like, as a, as a kid, I wasn't big, big into football, to be honest with you, Del. My dad is a massive Liverpool fan. Always has been a massive Liverpool fan. Um, funny enough, me and my dad had a massive argument. We fell out for about six months after uh, when Rangers beat Celtic at Celtic Park when Gerrard's act gone crazy the camera we felt like my dad for six months over it but um when he was younger when i was younger i mean i was about five or six my uncle tried to bring me off to goodson park he's a big evertonian Same dad's, a big, dad's a big scouser and um i used to just to piss them off i used to just go into the pound shop and buy these man united hats even though <laughs> didn't, like man united. Didn't, didn't, like, didn't like the english Premier league so around 12 around 12 years of age the world cup obviously ireland got to the world cup snapped my leg at the time couldn't play obviously football in the air with the boys and stuff like that because in like your last two years of primary school in dublin you get to go out to the yard and play football on your break you if you're younger folk you weren't allowed but um yeah. the World Cup came along and then we were going to santa ponza that year and my dad tried to deck me out in all liverpool gear and funny enough i actually went i like, jumped on the liverpool side for a couple of years and I was a mad into I was a mad Liverpool fan for about four years of my life. And then it all changed when Glasgow Celtic came along. So how what happened with how it started with Celtic was obviously Seville, two thousand and three, he's got to the final and um they knocked Liverpool out on the way. I was absolutely raging because I was a Liverpool fan at the time. I was raging. I, I love it now. I look back now and I absolutely love it because it's fucking brilliant. And um we were in we were in a, a shop called Lifestyle Sports and my mum turned around my mum was buying my dad the Celtic jersey, the Carlin one with the button on it at the time, the Aye. hundred years hoops. And the yellow jersey was on sale because we were going from NTL to Carlin. And she goes to me, um, do you want that jersey there? And I was kind of, you know, like, ah, oh, well, look where the school and look, you know. So I was like, Yeah, boy, so I watched the final. I was devastated for Celtic at the time. I was absolutely devastated. Devastated obviously Bobo got sent off and um, Larson scored the two goals and obviously Big Bad John didn't play because he was injured and um, upset. It was upsetting for Henrik. And then I start buying Celtic jerseys after that every year, long sleeve hoops. And then when it came together was when my uncle met a girl from Glasgow when I was 16 
and I was the first family member to meet her and the word she said to me was in Dublin she goes I'm going to convert you from a red to a team and I laughed and I said not a chance I I am Liverpool blah 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 and that all changed so it was Christmas time and this is the honest God on the street. People are probably be like, what the fuck? Yeah. It was Christmas time and she um, chants me this green present. And I look at her and I'm like, what the fuck's this like? <laughs> <laughs> so I opens it up and it's a yellow Celtic jersey with a bit bits of black in it. And she said, look in the, look in the um, inside the jersey. So there was like a tag and there was an envelope, a mini envelope. And it opens up and it was tickets obviously folded in and it was Celtic and Milan. And this is God honest truth. People are going to be surprised when I say this. Um, I turn around ghost where I go as well. I hope that's um, hope that's not on the same night as Liverpool and Barcelona because I'm not going to that game. That's what I said to her. She just looked at me. She goes, "You're ungrateful, little bastard." You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, I was just you know, Liverpool tints on at the time. I didn't really get. Didn't really like. Obviously, it was obviously going to be an experience to go to see Celtic Park. Heard amazing things about it, and then um, we went over. We'd done the stadium tour on the Wednesday morning of the game. Got to meet Neil Lennon. And my uncle said to Neil Lennon, he goes, um, this is his first time over. He doesn't have a clue what he's in for tonight, doesn't he not? And Lenny turned around and goes to me, young son, you really don't have a clue what you're in for this place on the European night. There's no better place. So I kind of like, you know, kind of laughed about it. And I was just like, yeah, whatever. Like, you know, whatever you think, like, you know. And um, so we went into Celtic Park, Nakamura was in the corner on the couch and um we went upstairs avando avando um snow was at the, upstairs and then i met mcgeady as well i met darren O'Day, and um thomas graverson brushed me off for an autograph he wouldn't he wouldn't sign that it, it. told me to wait outside even though he was, we were in the stadium like so um went 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 out to the tunnel now we weren't allowed out the tunnel actually we weren't allowed out because it was obviously match day we weren't allowed yeah. in the dressing rooms or anything like that and we went to the, obviously in the trophy room and i was looking at trophies I was like wow this is real old school like it, the carpet the trophies i couldn't like celtic park was the first ever stadium tour i ever done so i never went to anfield before this i jumped on the bandwagon of support liverpool i never went there i was got meant to go there years before that i got let down with a ticket but um so this is my first stadium tour as a teenager and um we went up to rod stewart's sea and my uncle turned around and goes to me see over there you're going to be over there this is that's the that's the lisbon line stand we're literally eight rows up in the pinch and i was like all right kill so we went back to cloyd bank got ready for the game before we went back we actually i bought he bought me a couple of celtic gear he got me the black tracks and bottoms the nike ones it was the night jersey with the tick up there the next yep. season against yep. United. um i got the white one with the yeah, well, yellow and green stripe going down it. The away one had the uh, on the back of it, and um, we had a great, had a like a green train top. I had like these kind of like zigzag des white designs around the Carlin, gorgeous top, V neck, gorgeous top, and um, so we were going to the game, going up to Celtic Park, and I was like, whoa, this is something else. Like this is pretty something else. I had a few few jars, then me a couple of vodka, sixteen years of age, and then. <laughs> got into the stadium and is about to get something to eat and he goes to me no the fuck you're not getting anything to eat you're going in there you're taking that atmosphere force man so we were there for about 10 15 minutes about half seven then they came out and did the champions league music came on then you never walk alone literally seconds after it and i was kind of like whoa like i just couldn't sing you never walk alone because i was just taken back by how many stars around me and i was looking at the milan fans literally about let's say about 20 rows away in that corner and um i start crying just start crying for about 20 minutes <laughs> yeah. and, I start crying. <laughs> and my uncle the uncle said it to me he goes i wonder it's gonna hit you and i was like laughed at man there it hit me like a ton of bricks and since then i've been a full-time celtic supporter the whole liverpool thing down the drain because i'll tell you how i tell you literally why i I don't even give a fuck about Liverpool, even though they're playing tonight against Benfica. Um, Liverpool played Celtic in the Aviv in 2013 in Dublin. I see. So my uncle was meant to come home for it, and he had a, he got a ticket, obviously in the Celtic end, and he couldn't get home, and he gave me the ticket. So I went to the game, wore, had a green Liverpool fucking goalkeeper jersey, had a zip-up Celtic top, the 125-year top, and I was in the Celtic end, and um, 
Sunga never walk alone, obviously with the pill fans. And then to war, about 10 minutes before, we started to go winning 1 0. Emilio Balde scored. And um, what happened was we started singing You Never Walk Alone 10 minutes before the pill fans, and the pill fans wouldn't sing with us. So that burned, that burned bridges with me straight away because the rela- relationship there. So I met a guy at the the game he was he was there himself from belfast and um he's like to me do you want to come to charlie and the boys i've heard of charlie and the boys i've heard of obviously the wolf tones and their organ all before that and um we went to the button factory to charlie and the boys so i didn't get time to go home and change of what i was wearing and um so we went to <laughs> charlie and the boys and i'm in a green liverpool jersey i'm Char- charlie and the boys now and people are looking at me like you know proper scots are like what the fuck are you doing that <laughs> i'm just like no i just i just realized after that i was like you know what if i if i want to make this page big and if i want to interact with a fan base that are phenomenal which i've seen in a couple I was at before that, like it was at about seven games. I was like, You gotta knock this on the head, another spot one club or none. None. So, um no. I just can't can't stomach the the Premier League. You know, um I just I've been to two derbies and stuff, but I'll let you ask me the questions anyway. Aye, so oh, that was quite late in life to, to become Different. a fan. Different, but, yeah. It's not like the but, usual, oh, he's born. No, in but that's it's a good it's a good story, mate, and it is. It's mm. totally different. So coming into that way, that was quite a good a good sight as well. Um who was who was your kind of early heroes then supporting Celtic for that time? McGeady and Nakamura. Aye. Lo- loved Ada McGeady because obviously he was playing for Ireland at the time. I was going to Ireland games. Um loved Stephen McManus. Oh, you thought McManus was Mac. happy. But my favourite my favourite of all that squad was Arthur Boric. The holy goalie was just a different level. Aye, aye, Love definitely, him. mate. You, you could, you could, you know, like Boric and people forget how good a goalkeeper he was because he was such a fucking head case. But aye, he's an absolute club icon. Um, so were you, were you quite? As you say, that that was your hooked on Celtic after that night. Did you try and go over to as many games as yeah, possible yeah. after that? Two weeks later, he brought me back over for an old firm when the old firm was around. Um, we lost 1-0, unfortunately, but just to take that atmosphere in of going to the pub and no one really gave a shit about the result. It was just a big... Like, obviously, at the time, the result was hard, but, like, people just got on with it. Like, it was a big occasion just to go out and drink. That was a big thing. And then, a few, obviously, the following season was the season we went into Champions League again. I was at the Shakhtar game when Yarosik scored and Donati... Yeah. I was at the um, Benfica game when McGeady scored. I wasn't at the Milan game when we beat Milan, Scott McDonald and McManus, but I was at the last 16 when we played Milan, or not Milan, Barcelona, and we lost 3-2, but we were 2-1 two, two, up at half time when yeah. Barry Robson, and then I was at the Derby, the 3-2 Derby, but like, it was just, that was my, that was the proper season when we won the league that season for Tommy Bournes, and that's when I knew you know, there's no coming back. That's that's me done. I'm wearing hoops for the rest of my life. So was that 2008? 2000. 2008, obviously, became a full-time, full-time fan properly. 2006. Um, well, the first game, my first proper game was 2000, February 2007. But I was into them around 2006. Um, 2007, eight seasons just made made me love Celtic properly. Because... Winning that league in the fashion we done for Tommy Bournes and yeah, obviously Scott Brown's sister sadly passed away a couple of weeks later as well. It was just it was an emotional roller coaster. It was fans as well. Aye, it was. It was a tough season. Did we win the league at Tannadice that year? Is that right? Tannadice on a Thursday night, yeah, and um, That's right, aye. they got they got beaten in Manchester as well by Zenit. Yeah, yeah, still still behaving like they were then. They are fucking now. Trash in city centres, but let's not talk about the fuckers. So, uh, that, that was your first games, and then obviously you, you've been to the what was formerly known as the Old Firm, and now the Glasgow Derby. What, what's what's been your favourite derby? Whether it be back home in Ireland watching it, or I've been at Paradise. I see this being there, seeing being there and seeing the win three two to basically the last derby of the season, the clinch. It was unbelievable. But um, I'd say the best derby ever watching. I would, I would say that the Dembele hat trick, hat trick, the five one was just a different level. Aye. 
Like we were expecting to go in and beat them, but it was just when Dem- Dembele was announced as starting and Griffiths was out, and the way we played them off the park that day, and uh, oh, just even the even the the Green Brigade, their display, you know, it's just it was just a magical day. Sinclair right. and Armstrong scoring as well. Yeah, I, I was in I was in Ibiza watching it and, and Finnegan's with really, a really good lady at the time. I remember it very well, mate. And came here, me a came here, me a pregnant fiance. So it was a good night for me. <laughs> <laughs> very good night, mate. Beat them five one. Then a bit risky. So <coughs> early, obviously a late starter in the Celtic family. Massive, massive Celtic fan now. What was your thoughts going into? 2011 and in the Celtic content and obviously where you are now absolutely smashing the game but what was your thoughts behind starting the podcast and the YouTube and the Facebook stuff and that it was basically um, I just I started falling in love with the whole Neil Lennon you know bringing back the thunder and watching the games and you know obviously we're all starting to jump on this face wagon, face um, book bandwagon and social media apps were coming on phones. So I thought, you know what, well, just set it up. Let's communicate because back in the day, obviously it used to be these Bebo groups, Celtic Bebo groups. And um, I just had it set it up. And I had a couple, I had a couple of admi- administrators at the time, had little admins and then um, met with a couple of them. But I just went my own way. Then there's only one girl that does it now with me, Holly. It does a great job. But um, I just... We were on Facebook, then Instagram came on the market. I was massive on Instagram. I'm not. I had like thirty eight thousand followers on Instagram, and then sadly had a bit of beef with a, 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 a vlogger to which we talk now, and then the page got shut down of our saying that was copyright. I was bullying or stuff like that. But um, the page got shut down before Instagram got shut down. I had the likes of um, Lisa Hagan live one night. Chris Commons misses. I had yeah. Simon Donnelly on a few times. Sid, I know Sid quite well. I had Jackie on. I've done an interview with Jackie a couple of times. And um, who else did I have on? I've had Gianni on. Actually, one night, who did we have on for the laugh? He's not a Celtic fan. Obviously, he claims he's a Motherwell fan. Nicky McDonald. Ex-fan. Oh, uh, he, uh, he's, he just stays on the corner for me, actually. Yeah, Nicky. Nicky uh-huh. um, I had Nicky on one night, chatting, chatting away to him on live, 1v1. And... Um, yeah, I've had I had like I had a lot of good connections, but a lot of them, a lot of the Celtic players, former players, did start following me back. Like, like if Simon was one of the first people to follow me, new page back, and Derek Royden, um, Jackie, yeah, um, George Cadetti, a few of them. But um, yeah, it was the Instagram went went really fucking viral because I used to sit down on the Friday night, similar to what you do with the Friday. You know, shy talk. I used to sit there on my own on the Friday night when the kids are asleep and get the cans out. Just have a bit of Celtic music in the background and just go live with the fans and just interact with them and Aye. chat to them. It could be someone from the south of England that's a massive Celtic fan to someone in Glasgow. It was just a bit of crack. And then, um, sadly, that, that got taken down. And then I just decided, you know, when I set it back up, I was like, I'm not going to go down that avenue. I'm just going to do it the way I should do it. Just post, post up stuff, people reshare it, people follow it naturally. It just happens. Yeah, that's that's what I like about it. I, I love the interaction, mate. And big Juddies, big Juddies on the, the comments tonight for Juddy Talks. Paddy's on for the, for the Jungle Gyms podcast. Obviously yourself. I've met Gav Smith. I've met Boise, the, the guys for the Unrestricted View. And you're out for a pint with Paddy in a few weeks. Mm. I've Go in, uh, it's going to see Big Juddy at the Fitbar. Me and Gaz, uh, me and Gaz uh, go back 10 years, we do. Me, I, James, mate, aye. Yeah, good lad. Me, me and Gaz are really good friends. Gaz has been over to Dublin a couple of times to see me. I've good lad. Gaz is and fucking, he's like a brother to me, you know. He'll be a glass region brother, you know. Um, but, like, we've been, to, we've been to a few games. We were at Scott, the last time I we went to a Celtic game with Gaz, me and we were, like, sitting together, well, standing together, was Bruni's testimonial. Um, All right. Is that the Republic game? Yeah. I wore the ah, was that? Wore, wore the Orland jersey in the, the Green Brigade section. <laughs> I was there, mate. I was there as well with the kids. That was a great day, man. Oh, just absolutely hanging after beating Motherwell <laughs> in the treble. But um, uh, regards to the YouTube, it's just I, people were saying to me on Instagram, like, would you not set up a YouTube channel? And I was kind of like, you know what? I don't really feel like it's the right thing to do. It took me about a year to get my head around of it. And I look back at me 
be early on YouTube okay. stuff. I used to be used to panic too much. I used to just write everything down. Now I don't write things down. Del, I just say I rec- I record myself, and if I feel like I stuttered or something, I'll go back and do the whole thing again. I don't have a script. I don't have nah. a layout. I don't have a way that people deal with dif- nah. people, different vloggers. Different. I just say it as it is, and so no, it's it's a lot more authentic, mate. I, I'm the same. I, I've kind of got a like a set set of questions that I kind of like to ask the guests, but I tend to no you know, look at it too much, and the, the interview goes whatever way the interview goes. I think it's so much more authentic than just asking the same stuff. Or if you're sitting, pe- people can tell if you're reading off a script. It's mm-hmm. it's so much more natural just sitting talking shit, and especially these kind of things. Um, because if I'm doing an interview, two or three interviews a month, and it goes in exactly the same direction, people just get fucking bored of it and they'll not listen, know what I mean? So, 100%, 100%. Definitely. So we spoke about the, the derbies, the, the European games at Paradise are some of the best ever. Oh, obviously, there's a big derby coming up at the weekend. Uh, me and you had a wee chat last night. So what's a, what's a day in the life of Keith at home in Ireland when the Celtic are are playing the Huns. What, what's if, the crack, mate? What? If if I don't have the kids, ah, oh, it's 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 it starts it starts on a Saturday night, man. If we're having them on a Sunday, it starts on a Saturday night. Get the eight cans in. Get the channels on. Go live. If it's a podcast or going live on TikTok, have a laugh. Get a few tunes on. Get people in the mood for it. And then the Sunday morning, if if it's a twelve o'clock kickoff, well, I know it's a two o'clock kickoff on Sunday. If it's a twelve o'clock kickoff, you're just gonna literally get up, have your fry, make sure you're literally filled to the gut because you're not <laughs> drink. You, know, you need a salty fry all day drinking, get that get that lovely bread into you and then go on live and get kind of people, but if if it's usually I go to a pub called Pada Brown so what I tend to do is for these games get the bus into town if the game's on at 12 o'clock I'd leave about quarter past 10 it's about 25 minutes, half an hour bus. Once I get off that bus, it's a 10 minute walk. Go live for the 10 minutes walk down the road. Start talking, start having a laugh. I look at, I love the camera. I love interacting yeah. with people. I, I, I'm not fain. I just love seeing people being interested in what I do. That's what uh-huh. it is. We're all into the same cause. We all love the colors. There's people out there that just don't like us, like Harry. There's Fuck people, Harry. There's Harry. Pe- there's, Harry's there's, a people, threat. There's, there's people out there that I know years that that just don't like me and try to name and shame me on yeah. Twitter. And they're Dublin Celtic fans and they know they know my history before of me being a Liverpool fan prior to this and I was a Liverpool fan prior to this and they tried to name and shame me like he's this and that. I'm like, mate, you can think whatever you want to think about it. The, the facts is I have built a channel. I have so many people following me because they like me for who I am. You can, yes, go, mate. You, can you, you can go over every weekend and love Celtic the way you love Celtic, but don't question my love for Celtic. I nah. am who I am. I wear these colours because my family got me into these colours. I wear these colours because I feel unique. I feel different than every other gobshite walking in the road wearing Man United and Liverpool. I feel different. I feel good when I walk into a pub, a local pub, and they tell me to go in the corner and watch the Celtic game because I stand out different to every other gobshite supporting Man United and Liverpool and sports. It feels better. The passion's better. It's a better stadium, better fan base. Celtic fans are worldwide. Liverpool fans don't even know half their history. Aye. It's well said, mate. I was got to, so I was got to start greeting there like you at the AC Milan game. Built, <laughs> built in. It's built in, you. Once yes. you go to Celtic Park, you got to know who Willie Maley is. you got to know who your Lisbon Lions is. you got to know who them players were. you got to know when we last lost the Rangers, when we did beat Rangers. You gotta know the seven one song. You gotta know all these songs because you're gonna fucking you're gonna stick out like a rock yeah. home. And that's what I learned. That's I quick enough I learned. I always I always find Four Lee Clover always makes me smile, even though it's cringy, cringy song always brings a smile to me that first few Aye. seconds. Aye. You know? Um, great, it's great hearing that at Paradise, mate. It's brilliant. Ah, it's just fucking different class, like but um yeah, it's for the for a get for a derby game. It's like literally go out and have about nine or ten points of Guinness if it can last that long. But obviously, cans of Guinness, the points of Guinness is a different level because it's all on the taps, so you feel a bit more on the stomach. Aye, definitely. <laughs> but, um, 
No, it's I just I just I treat it like I'm over in Glasgow. I go out, nothing's important to me, only the football that day. And that's it. That's it, mate. Hello. And that's I'll... great. It's great. Like going into that Pat Brown's pub is just Celtic staunch and going in there and you know people that follow you or you know people that you sit there and watch games with in the past and you just get that vibe like a jerk literally jumping on them like they're, they're brothers to you or they're sisters to you like it's just fucking great and that's what it's like the same at, at paradise you're just like i remember um i was over for the ferrovarus game and one of my mates gave me a ticket and she was saying like there's this guy that sits beside me he's a bit quiet but see when we scored two goals against ferrovarus fucking bloody had me the head headlock it's Aye. great. It's it great. Is, it is, mate. I, I love it. I've ended up three, four, five rows in, in front of me, especially <laughs> especially at the Derby games. Um, I, my, my, my nerves are at a, an all-time high than her for, for Sunday already. I know it's only Wednesday. Normally it takes me to the, maybe the Friday or the Saturday before the nerves the nerves start kicking in, but I, I'm, I'm getting is them in it the Is it because it's a cup and you know that'd be kind of, if, it's, if we lose, that's it. It's kind of like fucking... Ah, you know, if, if, if you win, then the, the, the chances are very, very likely that we're going to do a treble in Angie's first season. So ah, I think the nerves are just a wee, a wee bit worse this week, just because Big Juddy's on as well. Um, so 2008, as you say, it was quite an emotional season. At the time to support the club with what happened with Tommy and stuff. But what? What's been your standout season since you've been supporting Celtic? What one what, what, what have you enjoyed the most? Besides before season, I've actually gone over to games and taken it all in and buying the merchandise on a full time basis. Um, I say like I loved, I loved, I loved the Lenny season when we won the league. That was a big one because I remember we obviously beat Smash Command. I think it was five nil. I yep. Bobby Park, McCrew scored two. Ledley. Lovins, um, Hooper, uh, but I remember that day obviously sitting at home in Dublin watching it, and it was a 12 o'clock kickoff. And the tree stands in Rugby Park was full as hell, and we were wearing the yellow jersey. And I ended up going out and getting a 20 pack of butts and started drinking them, started drinking butterways at half eight in the morning to myself. My mum's like, <laughs> like coming in, she's like, Do you want to roll in the shop? Are you all right there? Like half eight in the morning, Keith. <laughs> I was like, Are you still on it from last night? I was like, No, I go Celtic are playing, they're playing on ESPN. ESPN, Jesus, had Derek Ray and all. And oh. Obviously, I think we scored in the first 10 minutes. Mulgrew obviously scored the header for us and then the I right first shot. And it was just champagne upon champagne. But I went out that night and that was that proud of the team. Wore my hoops jersey out for the night out. And like, we're going into the town and you don't really wear football j- colours into town. And um, I was just that, that proud. And that season was phenomenal. Unfortunately, we did lose the League Cup. For League, League Cup final was that. That Paddy's week. But um, the overall one, I'd say, it's because we've been, I wouldn't say spoiled with success. It's just the success has been, you know, it's hard to explain to other fans that don't support Celtic how big this is to us going on and taking big titles and yeah. winning these big derbies and hammering teams and spectacular fashion um i'd say the invincible she- season definitely aye aye it's hard it's hard to see by it uh, the, treble, hard... treble, the treble treble was a different different kind of fish because obviously the ups and downs were what happened with rogers and lenny coming in but i'd say the invincible season aye that was a good season mate. that was a good season as well I enjoyed that one too the whitewash, <laughs> the whitewash and all the arby's that's right aye the invincible season, just the the, the fit as well, mate, and just getting that other wee, wee one up on them, just another wee tick in the box that they haven't got. It just it just pisses them off. Well, what, what you were saying about the league stuff, and I I, I speak to a, quite a lot of people on Twitter, for like Everton fans and stuff like that through my through my family and stuff, and many people genuinely, as you say, if you don't support Celtic. The tin, the, the tin pot league and the farmers league or whatever they want to call it, they don't, they just don't understand that they, they nine years we won the league, the the quadruple treble, the invincible season. I don't give a fuck if we're playing against our broth and and Stranra. It doesn't matter. It's the absolute best days of your life. And all these English teams and that that have got absolutely no success. I'm not used to winning anything. Saying the league shite. 
like you being a late starter, if any one of them come up and went to a, a derby, a European night, instantly they would be hooked. So they would... I'll give you a prime example. Like my best friend that lives in America now, sitting out there just under a decade, and he's a staunch Man United fan. Me, like they, we used to go out to the boozers back in the day, and fucking he'd make me throw on the pillages, and I wouldn't be. I'd be like, ah, oh, Celtic are playing. I'm watching that man. Fuck Man United. Fuck Man United and Stoke. It'd be all about the Celtic. And um, he's he bring his misses. He bring his misses home. He's only worked a couple of months when we played Dundee United in the League Cup final when Ronnie. Ronnie's four season. Yeah. So I went out to the local boozer and um, there was only three teams in there. So everyone was getting ready for fucking Man United and Spurs that day at four o'clock and we were on early and seeing soon as Common scored and James he scored, I was screaming the place down. She couldn't get it. But he could get it because this two years before that I bring him over to Celtic Park for the for the game. Now we spent all traffic so many times and we went to see Celtic and Hearts. So we didn't get tickets together. Because I was using my uncle's season book, he was up in the top. Um, he was up in the higher Lisbon Lions. You simply saw you two Scottish lads, and he said they were the lads were passed on flasks to drink. <laughs> and, um, Paddy McCourt came off the bench and scored that day, and Sean Maloney scored. And I think it was I think it was Stokes or it was um, Daryl Murphy. It was either one of them. It was three 0 anyway. But McCourt's literally sensational goal. Like five, skip past five lads and slot it in. He was only on the pitch for ten minutes. But um, he after the game, he was like, Jesus Christ, this is some stadium, Keith. Like, the Celtic fans are fucking nuts. I goes, I told you, man. I goes, we're all brainwashed to believe that this is EPL shit. I goes, you need to go to Celtic Park. I goes, on a European night, there's nowhere in world football that can be Celtic Park. And I mark my words on that. And all the, the, the amount of big European players that have said that over the years. I mean, Messi's and... Buffon and whoever else you could you could dream oh, off. Maldini. Uh, you could you could dream off twenty players who have said it's the best place to play. It's true, mate, and that's again no. I was saying that because it's paradise, because it's fucking true. It's a, it's the best place in the world. Midweek Rangers games, Champions League nights, can it be beaten? Can it be beaten, thing, man? There's, there's two things I want to do before I pass away in the world, in, in my later years, is do the Celtic Convention, and man, Las Vegas. Las Vegas, yeah. Yes, mate. Yeah. Right there. That's one thing I want to do on the bucket list and do a European away game. I haven't done a European away game. I've been to six Europe, no, seven European games at Celtic Park, Conference, Europa League, and Champions League. Now I've done the whole, the whole slot there. But um, no, I definitely want to do a European away day. That's something I definitely want to do. If I can try get it done this season coming. I will. I'll just even go over for the day. I don't care if I don't get a match ticket. We'll I was going to say that. I, I've I've been to quite a few, mate, without a ticket, and I've always ended up getting one. To be fair, when, when you're over there, because there's that many Celtic fans absolutely pissed that they don't bother going to the game. So you, mm. you'll always get a ticket. But the away trips are brilliant, especially if you go with a couple of the lads and go the day before the game. There's always a band on, depending what what city you're in. The, la- the last one I was at was was Paris and. I I would never go back to it. Um, I don't even think I would take the missies because it's an absolute shithole of a place, man. Like Germany, I've heard so many things. Like people go when we played Mucha Gab back and when we played the likes of um, Stuttgart back in the Seville days and playing um, Labrakusen recently. Like you've heard so many good things. Like I had had Shay on my podcast. Shay Doolan's a good rebel singer. He's from Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah I've seen him. J- Jota on the wing. Yeah, and brilliant, Mac mate. Song. I he followed, he followed me on Twitter. I was watching some of his stuff on Twitter the other day. Shay's Shay Shay um, cousin runs the Michael David CSA. So you have a mixture of the Evertonians and the Liverpool fans that would support them on a weekly basis. But they all fuck off and go up to Paradise to do. They all go up and support Celtic on a full term basis. But, Aye. Um, 200 members, Delhi. But um, I'd love to go off to Germany and see Celtic play. That would be the, one of the best things to do. Like I've never been to Germany. Aye. I've I've been over I've been to Germany with the, the boys club when I used to play football when I was younger. It's a beautiful country, man. There's no really a, a bad place in it. I've been to Berlin and Hamburg and been to a St. Pauli game as well over there. So I G- Germany would definitely be one of my go to countries, mate, for a for an away trip. It's superb. Um I'm hoping and I'm getting paid next week, I'm hoping to go to Lisbon for the anniversary. I have two days. All right. Talk. So I'm going to try to get my best friend on board with this, and he's a massive team. And um, 
get him aboard, try to try to get the two of us off for two days, the Monday to the Wednesday. The anniversary is on the Wednesday, but I just want to get up and see the Stadio Nacional. Are you going to try and get back over to are you getting back over to Paradise before the end of the season? I doubt it. Be, I probably will. I will be back over before the end of the season, but I won't be back over for the game. So how it works is, if people, if your you viewers don't know what the situation is with me, I have two little girls, so I take my kids the weekends. That mother walks weekend, so I've no babysitter. Trying to get a babysitter literally is like impossible. So I. I utilise my time watching Celtic, take care of my kids, and then when I get over to Paradise, it's during the week. So when midweek games come up, I try my best to come over. Unfortunately, I was meant to be at the Hearts game. I was going to say that. I think I think we play. Is it Dundee United? I think that's a way game. It's midweek. Yeah, back, there's no way. No way. I'm going to get a ticket for the Hanalois for that. No, no, mate. It's you know I love it. I wait. I wait. Tickets are like hen's teeth now. They're an absolute nightmare to get, but. Right, another question for you that I, I like to ask. Um, a player that you would have loved to have signed for Celtic, barring transfer fees, wages, anything, what what player or a couple of players would you love to have seen playing in the hoops? Even if they were loan bases or just never? Yeah, never yeah barring, barring obviously money in that. Like your, uh, uh, Ronaldinho was always mine. Oh, Ronnie! Ronnie was a cla- class act. He was. Yeah, mate. Um, Jabby Alonso. I just always wanted oh, Alonso. Oh, me. Jabby, Jabby all day. I'm not gonna fucking say Stephen Gerrard for God's sake, am I? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, Jabby Alonso or Craig Bellamy. I love Bellamy. I was always a big fan of Bellamy. His early days at Newcastle, and then he went along to Celtic. Then he was at the Pill and then Man City and Blackburn and West Ham. Ah, he was just a different level. I love Bellamy. He just gave everything for every club he was at. He did. He did, mate. And I would have loved to have seen him stay at Celtic. That was a terrible season he came, obviously, if what happened at the end of the season and stuff. I'd have loved to have seen him flying at Celtic and staying for two or three seasons. Sure says. He, even though he had a lot, of, a lot of clubs, he never seemed to settle anywhere, didn't he? Know? But everywhere he went, he was a wee bit Maida-esque, wasn't he? He just ran all day, but... His, his finishing was absolutely frightening for, for he's a, he's a winger. Yes, mate. Unbelievable. Bellamy was a different class, even in his in his mid-30s. And my me, me heart goes out for Craig Bellamy because when Gary Speed passed away, he took that bad. I know two days later, he played for Liverpool against Chelsea, but um, he he opened he, he talked about it during lockdown, about his depression. He had to leave Belgium. The be- he, was, he was over in Anderlecht being a coach today. He had to pack it all in because it was that bad. What a yeah. man, Bellamy. Bellamy was something else. Yeah, Paddy Boy said he's had a kickabout in the legendary pitch in Lisbon. I think he was saying that to me. Lucky bastard. Jump the Clyde, you would commit with a tick in your mouth, Paddy. <laughs> um, all, all, all position players... Um, the word of hated who, who, who did you hate? It doesn't need it doesn't it doesn't need to be Rangers, but I would imagine it will be. What what players did you did you really, really, really dislike as a Celtic fan? I know you could probably write fifty down the new, but who who did you always despise when we played the rotten mob? Um I I'd have to say Novo. Novo was Aye, mate, I'm with you, I'm with you. Um Novo, um as much as we all hate Barry Ferguson. I don't hate the man this much anymore because he's actually an alright pundit. We go radio, you know. But Novo definitely be up there. Um Jeff. Oh, Amaruso. Juff, Juff can't stand the man. Horrible. Um Amaruso be up there as well. Back Abo. Yeah, Amaruso. Well look at get the whole gas going thing as well before my day is but um um what's his name? Naismith. Oh, I couldn't stand Naismith at Rangers. It was just a he was just had one of the wee angry fucking hun faces, didn't he? It was just a horrible wee, he, even when he went to even when he went to Hearts, I think it was it was it was it Hearts he was playing with when he stamped mm. in Bruni? Mm. Aye, at Tynecastle, I remember. Okay. Uh, Good player, but he was an absolute dort. He was, mate, and I know people that know him and he's totally he's a totally different person after the park, like, dead quiet, reserved wee guy, but just a wee fucking rat bag when he went on the park. Right, what's next on the agenda? We'll get into the, a wee bit of the, the, the season so far. Um, 
you got your have you got your best eleven nailed down? Of all time. Yeah. Of supporting. Yeah, I do, yeah. Got it, mate. That's good. Right, so yeah, obviously yeah. I, I like I like to speak a wee bit. I know you we do podcasts and we speak about the season quite regular, midweek and stuff like that, but nine months ago the bit happened last year, obviously the the turnaround's been nothing short of miraculous this year. What what's your thoughts been on, on the season for last year to, to where we are now and what do you think's going to be in the trophy cabinet at the end of the season? Right. This is the best way to summarise this up for any fan, right? It's basically like loving someone you've you've you met the love of your life ten years ago. Everything happened spectacular. Sadly, the love of your life passes away, and you just for the whole for the, the whole the whole year you just can't get over it. You're just weaving and weaving and weaving, and then this magical person comes into your life changes everything upside down and you weren't surprised you were surprised that was happening and everything has been more than you expected that's it finding finding love finding love at first sight <coughs> even though i wasn't at first sight when Ange came in but i'm telling you it's love now it's love now uh, it's, me. it's unbelievable we are we're the club are and i think absolutely everything's everything's done to Ange. absolutely everything obviously I want to give I want to give Joe Hart a massive recognition as well. Like yes, I think so. I mean, I've I've mentioned it a few occasions that he's got to be spoke about for player of the season. I think I, I think his character because I mean at the weekend there I think Paddy touched on it his podcast. He looked as if he was playing centre half. So <laughs> right so, back at one stage. <laughs> I, so some some games he's he, he's no touching the ball, but the the way he comes across in the interview. The way he's been with the fans and getting his gloves and his tops away every game and just being out and being commanding and the way he speaks to the players and all that, he's been an absolutely phenomenal signing. And the last year's shit show with, with Barkas and Bain not playing particularly well, Big Hazard coming in, it's, it, it's going to be the signing of the season. And I know Kyogo scored the goals and Hatati and stuff have come in and Big Giamakis is flying now, but Joe Hart for me, what a signing! They're going to be in support and Celtic what, since 2006 properly, and I'm going to ha- I'm going to put this ball wards right out now. I think Joe Hart being my top five signings since I've been supporting the club because the impact he's brought. I I don't think a lot of fans could disagree, mate. After after what happened last year, so I, I would I, I would agree with you, mate. So the the semi final on Sunday, me and you spoke about it last night. I know we'll be doing podcasts at the weekend and that, so we'll not go into too much about the game, but what do you think? End of the season, League Cup, League title, Scottish Cup, back in the trophy cabinet for Big Ange, or are you still on the fence? Uh, I, hate, I hate when people start saying take a game every time, as much as I'm being like that all season, but you're okay. You can't. We have, to, we have it in our lockers to do it. We have it in the locker. We've Every challenge that's been put in front of us this season, we've overcome it. Covid, injured players, not having a good squad and um, squad depth, winning winning the crucial derbies. I know the first derby we didn't win, but getting getting our way for them on top top draw, doing well, winning the league cup. Yeah, why not? We, we can do it. We can simply do it. Yeah, we can. Yeah, definitely. One one more question for you before we we go into your best eleven. How do you, how do you think uh, Ange Postecoglou side? In a in a Champions League group, we just to be with, with obviously he's got a very particular style and we know how he plays and he tended not to change that in games like Betis and Leverkusen where we get a bit of a doing. But how how do you feel about doing a, a tough Champions League group? This is a claymore question, isn't it? Because if you asked me this six weeks ago against Bolo Glimp, I would have been saying, "Here, look at scores, <laughs> FIFA scores." Um, to be brutally honest with you. A how do you, how do you think this current squad would do in the Champions League? Because obviously, think, I I yeah. think we we'd be lucky to get six points out of a group. That's to be honest with you, six points out of six games. That's to be honest honest opinion. And the, regardless who the opposition is, what I like about Ange's style of football in Europe that we have we haven't had over different managers, we can we take the game to these teams like Leverkusen, like Betis, and um, like Werner Varus. We take the we take the game to them. So. I'm saying six points 
if we if we are successful to get in the Champions League next season. Do you think we'll we'll see Ange making big tactical changes next year no. going into a European tie? If no. Oh, obviously, it's showed in, in Betis and, and, and Leverkusen and stuff like that. If, if we do attack, then we're, we're always going to score goals. I, I think we score goals against big European clubs as well, just because of the way he plays. But if Celtic have been historically very, very unlucky in Champions League groups, Barcelona's, AC Milan's, Benfica, Porto, just constantly really, really tough groups, tended to always get two of the top 16 sides in Europe in a Champions League group. But if if we get a Barcelona, a fucking Benfica, for example, and a lesser team, I, I, I don't know, mate. I, I, think, I think he might surprise us. And that, this is something I've, I've spoke about quite a lot that I don't think he'll change. But surely it has to. Surely it has to be progressive going into such a tough, tough competition. And sh- as a manager, you, you've got to want to win games. Surely Ange must know deep inside if he's playing a Barcelona or a Real Madrid or a fucking Man City, then he can't play the way he plays football and expect to be successful. Know what I mean? I think he won't because you've seen against the Labrakeus and he, he didn't, the home game, he went for the system and then the away, he's tried the same system. And I think that's why I think worries about me if we're going to the Champions League next season. I think he won't change the system around. He may change the personnel around. Yeah. Rest of, and rest the players and put bring crucial players in. But I think he just goes for that four-three-three system. And if you're going against the likes of Guardiola and Klopp and all, they're going to literally piss all over. And that's the truth. I know. I know. That's what saying. The main, the main thing is is getting getting back in there and getting back to paradise with the Champions the League board, nights. The, the league, that's it. The bread and butter is the Yeah, it, all, it always is, mate. And the, the Brendan Rodgers era was tough. The, the Bayern Munichs and the, and the PSGs getting absolutely battered, but still going to paradise on a Tuesday or Wednesday night and hearing that Champions League music's absolutely nothing better. I, I'm excited. I'm excited to see how he'll do. I, I, I see now I'm a wee bit on your... Your YouTube today, obviously, the, the, the Villarreal things cropped up because they got an absolutely phenomenal result not, in Germany look at, last night. Look, at, obviously, Liverpool are going to be a superior team at the moment. I think Liverpool's drawing with Benfica the last time I checked. But um, what, I was, what, what I worried about the whole Villarreal team, they're, beating, they're knocking out Juve and they're not they're knocking out Bayern, Bayern Munich. So, like, it's not... It's not off the cards. Like they won the Europa League last season as well, so they have a decent manager as well. Yeah, I think I think um, oh, yeah. Emery did Emery win it three times with Villarreal. Um, he won it. He won it with Sevilla three times, and then he Sevilla. Won it with Sevilla. Yeah. So it was. That's right. I remember now. So like people, like at the end of the day, I I won put a pass and that they could get to the final, but Liverpool have a better team. If Liverpool be be Benfica, but... three three each, mate. It finished. Three each, so Liverpool went through then. So three each, mate. Aye, it was yeah. three one for the first game. So, right, the big one, the one everybody wants to hear. Um, jump in in the comments with, with, with Keith's oh, team as well. Um, and remember, remember as always, it is it is Keith's team. This is this is players that Keith has seen he's seen playing in his time. He's been a Celtic fan for two thousand and six. So. Just bear that in mind when everybody jumps yeah, in and not, says... It's not Lars and Lambert and Lubos and all. I've seen yeah. Lars play a couple of testimonial games and stuff. So, like. normally when I do them, it's it's been the kind of the same kind of age group and you always get your Larsons, your Suttons, your Paul Lamberts and folk will jump in and say, why no Paul McStay? Why no this? Why no that? It's Keith's best 11. It's the best 11 players he's seen along with his, his favourite manager. So... Go for it, mate. What's what uh, formation are you going with? And then you can you can run us through your eleven and why you put them in there. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna go with manager four. So it has to be Brendan Rodgers as much as people. I can't be like, uh, nah. He, nah, start, why, he why started this treble, started this treble success. Class manager. You know, he bring it. He bring a different culture to the Celtic Celtic team. We got two Champions Leagues out of them as well. We got two trebles out of them as well. We got we got seven trophies out of them, and we got some phenomenal moments and a white a clean sleep against Rangers as well. Yes. This season so has to be has to be Brendan. Um, <coughs> goal has to be Arthur Boric. I always look at Boric <coughs> them saves against Milan. The game was a uh, 
Um, the, the penalties shoot out against Spartak Moscow. The saves against Rangers holding the champions flag and Ibrox. Yes, it has, to, it has to be the holy goalie. I know we've had Fraser, we've had Gordon. Gordon was a phenomenal series. Aye, but are we keeper? Free free transfer class. Um, I know we've obviously have had, had Joe Hart and um, you know we had Logan Bali as well. <laughs> Woof. Is that going to be the, the, long, the uh, long hair, the playboy? Yeah, Logan Bali. That's yeah. right, aye. That's it. We have, we have Saluska following me now, so it's not too bad. But um, it has to be Boric all day, the holy goalie. He just had a bit of bite about him. That's what I liked about him. Um, let back Kieran Tierney. Yes, mate. Left back. And as much as I've seen the likes of Izzy Gere playing there and stuff over the years, but I loved Izzy. I see Izzy's fourth season. It was a phenomenal, absolutely unbelievable. It broke my heart when he, he snapped his leg against Aberdeen. Yeah. I went out and got his name on the back of my home jersey and all that, so much I loved Izzy. Um, but it has to be KT coming through the youth system, getting to getting his dream to manage, to, not manage Celtic, captain Celtic, scoring his captaincy. Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock. What a goal, man. Oh, what a goal. Absolutely r- r- ran Raheem Sterling to the ground against City. He played unbelievable for us. And you know what? It didn't cost us a single penny to have him in our team, and we made 25 million. Kieran Tierney, the way he ran up them hand and steps, where he busted him out and lifted that trophy and done the cr- done the. Cr- that's 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 what, that's the picture on their, mm-hmm. their badge for the bus, mate. The Kieran Tierney Celtic supporters bus. Is that, that picture? Love it. I'll need, I'll, need to, I'll need to send you the... Well, I'll be honest with you. See, when he got sent... When he, I was going to say sent off. When he got he got taken off and we were down one day, I was like, oh, fuck, this is going to be a hard one to get back yeah. into. He, he brings a lot of, like, biting that wing with Sinclair. But um, T, KT, unbelievable. Oh, um, we've got loads of KT merch, mate, for the bus. Hoodies and T-shirts and um, gilets and stuff like that. I'll, I'll send you the pictures, mate. You might like some of the gear. Oh, Cracking me. I, I, I wear Kieran Tierney as much as we had a lot of fans that literally couldn't accept that he was gone. It was a love relationship. Um, call him Judas and this and that. Look, at, we made twenty five million. You got to move on. I wish him the best in his career. If he if he goes, <laughs> Lee Naylor. I met Lee Naylor. He's not a bad. He wasn't a bad lad to me. Scored a couple of times against Rangers as well. That free kick. <laughs> Aye, the trickler. Al, Al, Al Alexander didn't have a clue what was going on. <laughs> but um. I got right back. Oh, it has to be Lustig, you know. <sighs> Lustig's. I think you, you can I speak about Lustig like you speak about Arthur Boric. I feel he's just like yeah, a dead, yeah. I, yeah, iconic yeah. figure, and he just absolutely got the club. I, I was fucking gutted when he left. Mm-hmm. I, prob- probably no performance wise because he could kind of see he was coming probably at the end of his time at Celtic, but I was devastated when he left. Yeah, I, I loved Lustig and I, I felt like he got raw a raw deal there. Like we could have kept him for one more season. Even Probably. As a, like a squ- squad player, kind of like Johnny Hayes. Johnny Hayes should have been kept, you know. Um, same with Gordon as well. But we could have, there would have been another season left in Lustig. And you know, you know what's you know what's crazy at the moment? Jordan Larson and Mikael Lustig are playing the same thing. I know, I know. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Wonder what that conversation will be like yeah. in the dressing room. Oh, crazy, crazy. Um, Centre-backs, I had the privilege to see Bobo Balde play three times for Celtic, so Bobo, Bobo has been there. Aye, uh, he's, in my team. he's in my team as well, mate, I loved him. Bobo's going to get you. And now what I loved about Bobo, as much as the club did him, the last season he got, well, he kind of got screwed over, he still came in and done a job when we had players injured, you know? Like Codwell went out injured and he came in and done the job for Codwell. As much as we didn't really wait Codwell in his first couple of seasons at Celtic. Um now he's not a Celtic icon. I put him in I am putting him in here because where the impact he's made since he left Celtic and when he was at Celtic, he was t- he was too good for that league. But he was never too good for Celtic. Virgil van Dijk. Yes, mate. It's hard it's hard not to put him in, isn't it? We made twelve million off Virgil van Dijk when he left Southampton to Liverpool, so 12.5 in the kitty. That goal against Ross County was it not Ross County? It was St Johnston when he free took the ball. Oh, and, yeah. Fuck it. The free kicks, free kick against Inverness in the cup semi final against yeah. Ibs. Ah, Van Dyke was just a beast. Him and the Neuer at the back were absolutely savage. Aye, they were. That was a good partnership, actually. That would, it would have been good. The, but... And the Neuer's doing quite well. He's in the Belgium team, like you know, he's pretty decent. 
Aye, I think he gets put more or less every time for Belgium. Is it Leon? He's still up. Yeah, he's at Leon. Yeah, he's still Leon. Aye, he was a good. He was a good player, mate. It's, it's hard to it's hard to hang on to guys like that. But Van Van Dijk was an absolute Rolls Royce. Just just the thought of him playing at the back with big bobos, fucking oh wow. You just knew when we got beaten by Malmo away at the start of that season that he was gone. He played his last game. I know he played against, well. He played against St. Johnson that weekend, and then he was gone. But um, has to be Van Dijk midfield. I went with five in the midfield. All right, just one uh, up top then, aye? Eh? One, one up top as much right. as we have so many cracking players over the years that I had the pleasure to see. Um, Bruni, Scott Brown, Scott Brown. It's alone like what. 22 titles over 650 games his career 680 yeah. games you know um i had the pleasure to meet scott brown his four season at celtic i was have a picture i'll read it out of us me me dad and bruni and um it's just this was a lad obviously rangers trying to get him and then he went to us and he was just unbelievable unbelievable he doesn't get the credit and we're gonna look back in 10 years time and be like oh my god are we ever gonna have something like him again i know just the callum mcgregor debate but um brownie's in there and um, callum mcgregor's next i think you know very similar come through the youth system he's a scots man scored in the derbies he's now our captain he's about he, he could be on the verge of putting off historic historic season with celtic as a captain and this yes, rebuild. so cal mackos in there if you asked me that you asked me um this time last year callum wouldn't be in and now definitely wouldn't he's having he's having a what a season he's having He's been absolutely superb. I mean, he's been absolutely superb. I was a wee bit, I was a wee bit skeptical, skeptical of getting the the captaincy. To be honest with you, I didn't know if he had the character, but fuck me, man, he's he stood up to it big time, hasn't he? Hundred percent. Left wing Nakamura. Yes, mate, Naka. Free kicks. Um, the moments Deb that Kamara still playing Fatba. Still playing. Forty three. He's still, he's, I think he's just signed a contract maybe at the start of the season. Oh, just a different level. Got to meet the man. Um, yeah, Nakamura has been in there. I just felt like could have, could have kept him for another season or two and then he went to Espanyol. A bit raging I was. Obviously, they were the, the, the climax to the Strachan days and then Mulberry came in. I always want. We didn't get the chance to see Nakamura in that Bumblebee, unfortunately. <laughs> um, right wing, James Forrest. Ooh, Jamesy. Jamesy. He's been at the club, what? Aye. Aye. Unsung hero. He's done it. I think he has as well, mate. I, I've, I've never been like his, his biggest fan. I absolute 100% respect him and where he's coming for. Big, big game player. Goals against Rangers. Really, really good European performances and that. Ah, it's just a wee bit too much a shite bag for me, but challenges and he does not that. that that's that's probably the only reason i don't like him which is maybe a wee bit unfair i don't i don't dislike him he's a celtic player i, fucking, I love him but i've never been his biggest biggest fan but hey it's your teammate so don't listen to me talking shit oh, it, it was it was a, a tough one between these two it was either georgia samaras or i went with this guy so i decided to go with this guy because he's his stats and he chris commons come on commons Commons was an absolute ball up for Celtic. Aye, aye. All his, all his free, game, mate, he was kicks. fucking amazing. Pe- penalties, uh, boise kicks, scoring against them, scored against them. And Oibrox, uh, he's away debut, he scored on his debut against Aberdeen, scored on his home debut. Kamal, was, Kamal had everything. And unfortunately, aye, he was a Ronnie, great player. Ronnie didn't really give him the chance in his second nah. season. Nah, I don't, I don't know why, mate. I don't and know why. Brandon, Brenda didn't give him a chance, he went to Hibs. Well, Chris Commons, um, as much as we all don't like him behind the scenes, off the ball, he was a bit of a gobstrike when he left Celtic. Ah, he was. You know, but the punditry, I couldn't stand him. He was, he was actually worse than Boyd at one time. That's how much I hate him. But um, Como, as a player, was unbelievable. And then um, up front has to be Gary Hooper. As much as I want that melee, <laughs> but, but Hooper, oh, what a finisher. Aye, he was a player. He was a player. There's... there's... Ben saying go for a lie down. Go for a lie down because I'm picking all the skirts. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's a that's a good side, mate. I've I've got a wee app and I'll 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 put your eleven on with the manager. I'll ping it out to you, mate. We'll stick it up on Facebook and Twitter and your Insta and that and get a, a wee bit of pattern. 
it's a totally, totally different team for for my usual side, for the usual suspects, the the mixed days and the Larsons and guys like that, but still still a very, very good team, mate. The reason why I went with Hooper is because Hooper was at Celtic longer than Dembele. So that's the reason why. Aye, them aye, definitely, against, mate. Them goals against the old cop as well, when he literally ran Roy against them, they were off. <laughs> aye, the 3-0 three, the game, I think he scored two, was that before they died, 2011. That was a yeah. that was a brilliant game, that man. Ah, he was he was a really really good pair Hooper. He was another another one you wish would have stayed ah, he that wee he, bit longer. But money money talks, mate. Many ah, shambles his career. He went down to Norwich. Then it was Sheffield Wednesday. Then he left Sheffield Wednesday. Went to um, <laughs> went to New Zealand. That's went, right. Went to New Zealand. Went to Wellington. They were still playing. playing? Still playing in Australia, then, eh? No, he retired, he retired last season. He was playing in India. Oh, aye, in the, the Super League. That's yeah. A lot of them go there, mate. But I, I, I know an ex Celtic player that used to go there quite regular and play, mate. Rob, the money was, the money was mental. Was there, yeah. That's right. I think Owen Coyle's been managing her there for quite a while as well, hasn't he? Robbie Fowler and guys like that have dipped their toe in the market. But the money's, the money's mental. But listen, mate, that was a good chat. What's happening, um... This week on the channel, what's the plans? What's coming up on the Come On the Put the Hoops podcast this week? Um, doing a video tomorrow talking about the the best well the best five victories that we played against them at Hamden since they've been formed. We're gonna be talking about that tomorrow on the channel. Gonna do a preview on Saturday night alloy preview. Gonna do a normal preview. Um, Friday, I've nothing yet to talk about. Wait until Ange does his his press conference. Then Sunday, I'll be out on the drink all day. But more likely. When I get back, when I'm ropey, when I'm oiled up, I'll be I'll be on live and I'll be chatting to people. So um, hopefully I get yourself. I get I'll hopefully have Paddy or even Judy on on Saturday night. If Judy is free, I probably Judy's watching now. Judy, I know you're a busy man. We try to get you on for the change. Um, like thanks very much for having me on tonight. It's something different. I like being in, getting the questions shown at me. Aye, it's been good, mate. Thanks very much for your time and. Thanks everybody for, for tuning in. Again, hit the like, subscribe and the wee bell for notifications for my upcoming podcast and my Celtic story interviews. Follow me on Twitter, Celtic Podcast 67. And for anybody listening that doesn't know any Keith stuff, check the description box on YouTube and all Keith stuff's there for his Facebook, social media, email, stuff like that. So thanks very much, big man. Thanks for everybody watching. Have a brilliant week. Um, no doubt. My big bald heat will be on the, the internet at some point over the weekend, whether it before the, the Servco game or after it. Absolutely pissed, as Big Keith said. But I'll be seeing you soon. Take care and God bless everybody. Hail, hail. Up the Celts.